Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today you picked a topic and we're going to be painting it. And you're like, did I pick a bird? This was actually the result from last week's You Guys Picked It Challenge, where you guys were given four subjects that we could paint. And during, right before the show, I see the winning topic and then I painted it with you and I showed you my design process and how I create original art, and we created it together. So that was super fun. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. Now, this is a Thanksgiving show, but of course, you might be here uh, watching it on the replay. So for those of you that are celebrating American Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. I hope everything is awesome and easy, and every single dish that you're making comes out. But I generally hope that for all of your meals everywhere, all around the world, I hope all, all of your dinners come out beautifully. Uh, regardless of why you're coming together. Uh, John and I like to be live on Thanksgiving. We haven't done it in a while. Yeah. Um, but we used to like to make sure to do Thanksgiving because um, people can uh, find themselves isolated during the holidays. Uh, sometimes, um, even when we're not isolated, the people that we're with are stressful for us <laughs> and we need a little break. So we just like to do these live art shows to give y'all um, either company if you need it um, a break if you need it, or an awesome bit of painting information that you didn't know that I'm going to teach you during the show. So you can check out last week's um, if you want. That's available to watch, traceable, all of it, the reference, all of it is there. Because the, when it's from my imagination, you find that the reference and the traceable come later. <laughs> so, so those are available after the show. But I'm going to break down every part of this. So even though this is from my imagination, um, I'm going to break down my processes and my thoughts, um, why I'm doing what I'm doing, and go through every step of creating the painting with you. So not only are you learning how to create the painting we make today, um, and, and you're getting a surprise. And who doesn't love a surprise? Because I'm thinking today, Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what you're painting until you all figure it out <laughs> on your own. All the way until you get it there? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, can, we can do it. Yeah. I'm up for it. So I had to do that. I'm, I like that idea, like a little surprise for you guys. All right. So the winning topic for this week, I have some good ideas in my head. Yeah. And I think I'm going to just have y'all be a guessing. No. Nine by 12 surface, guys. Mystery paint. Yeah. You don't even get me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Mars Black. Cad yellow, medium, cad red medium, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, uh, yellow ochre, titanium white, and glazing liquid. I may put out zinc white depending on how my materials behave today. And a 9 by 12 I like to use because it's just a very common um, size and it's easy to frame. I do think I will start with a ground though. Yeah. All and right, so let's... Brie is kicking things off with a wonderful Happy Thanksgiving wish. Oh, well, let's put that on the surface since we're so starting many. with the black canvas. Paint your canvas black. I'm going to put my wish. There's so many here I see going up. Happy... Uh, if you are celebrating Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. If you are not celebrating Thanksgiving, happy day. Now, today's maybe even a, an extra special day. Mm. Because we're we, we're gonna have a guest co pilot because I have I have multitasking dad jobs. Like cook dinner. <laughs> well <laughs> you shouldn't have been so good and making it. You've done uh, this to yourself. I don't know about that. I just follow the instructions. No no, no, no. <laughs> no. I follow the instructions. You have a relationship to that cut of meat that I don't have. <laughs> I don't know about that. So what's what happened is we um we got a uh French Dutch oven, which is a porcelain lined Dutch oven, um, and uh, they they call them all different sorts of things, but it's just a basic por porcelain porcelain lined thing. And so we started like, well, what can we cook in it? And well, all the things we that we got. We did a bunch of pot roasts because we didn't know anything about pot roasts. We're like, oh, we'll just try that. And that turned out to be pretty good. So that's what we're going to be cooking. Is that right? That is exactly right. I'm actually just enjoying my black squiggly wigglies today and the fact. Okay, so who in the chat, tell me right now in the live chat, who is painting along with me today? Um, 
who is painting along with me today. I might be able to do something. That you don't know what you're painting, but you're going to do it anyways. You're going to go for it. So I'm painting my whole canvas black. I'm going to use a big brush to do it just because I don't want to work for it. So this is a one inch oval mop. I'm going to be using this particular brush a lot during this painting. Hey, uh, sweetheart. Yeah. I know you're like, don't tell me things live during the show. But I feel like I need to. I'm oh, no, it's okay. That. No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> well, I'm painting black, but that looks distinctly brown on my monitor. I think oh. my monitor's blown out or something. Oh, your monitor is. Your is it, is, is it supposed to be that crazy color? No, no. So if I look up here, so on my screen, there is a light brown hue to this or bright tint to it, but it's definitely black. I think that maybe some of the reflection. I'm going to come over here and just double no, check. No, no. You need to look at my monitor. Yeah, like yeah. It's, oh. it's it's going brown to purple. No, no, no. Oh, not wow. a, yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like I don't want to bug you, but no, it's no, a spider. big difference. Did you, did you, it doesn't look like that over there, does it? No, it doesn't. Oh. Okay. Okay. So spider's looking over my shoulder. So you should check the health of the monitor after the no, show. No, no, no. What it is is that, uh, let me go look. You can see me grabbing water to improve the flow of my paint. Oh, that is gone weird. That is I know. It's so easy to be like, my crazy wife. What is she thinking about? No, no, and I'm wonder... looking at this going, I feel like Egon so, here, going, me... it would be bad. Let me flip over so you can look on your secondary monitor. And let me flip. Oh, I don't have it. It's not on. Push a button on the left on the lower side of it. I think I did. And you can paint the sides of this, but at least paint around the edges a bit so that if you frame, the white of the canvas isn't showing. Okay. Now, that might seem weird to you that uh, given the choices that you were voting on, because you had, you know, uh, snowy pines and watercolor and you had an oil pastel, uh, you had... Um, some acrylic paintings, so you know it's an acrylic. Oh, that was all step one. Everything by the way. had, uh, I, yeah, I, everything that everything, was all step that one. That was all step one. So sorry about that. I got I got distracted by the distraction. It's okay. It's okay. Just, that you, was distracting. Do you see the screen over there to your left though now? Yeah. Is that's what's that's about. totally fine. That's okay. What's on my screen? You can I see this worrisome. Yeah, I think I also did. So I think that her screen got bumped when I was working on things, and it just caused everything to go wonkety wonkety. Just caused everything to go wonkety wonkety. So, uh, yeah, something happened back here where we had some something weird. I don't know. But I figured, oh my goodness! Thank you guys for everybody hanging out and being part of the show today. It is one of those weirdo days. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna look over here and chat. And see, oh my goodness! There's so many people here. Yeah, and so I'm going to, uh, the, the cooking that I'm going to do is actually we're going to do a, a pot roast. And so we went and got a big old chunk of meat, which I know nothing about. I just went to the counter and the guy was back there. It's funny because I was like, I want I would like a pot roast. And he goes, I got a pot roast right here. And he pointed at it and it said thirty four ninety nine, And I got another one over here. And, uh, and I was like, that's thirty four ninety nine a pound. And he's like, yeah, that's wakaba, w- 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 some other, it's a, Beef that begins with a W and a Wawagu. Yeah, yeah spiders over here. Is Wagu, something like that. And I was like, I was like, that might kill me to eat that thing. Thirty-four dollars a pound. And he was like, Yeah, me too. But this other one over here is nine dollars a pound. That's a much. I was like, That's the one I'm looking for. So, so uh, some of you guys water. might be surprised uh, that our topic, right? Because you don't know what we're painting, but you know it's a winter scene because that poll was public and y'all saw that one winning. Um, but what winter scene are we doing, and why are we starting with black? Um, One of the things we think about uh, in winter is that very often it is monochromatic, meaning it does not have a ton of color in it. So you'll notice I don't have a complex palette out here at all. Now I'm going to take off my little sweater because the house is final. Were you clipped to my sweater? Yes, but you unclipped. It's okay. It came loose. You're still not dry on the surface. I can still see some. I know. It's never going to dry. Okay. I just want to make sure. No, it's super annoying. So I don't know we'll, we'll move what's on to going step, on. We'll move it's, on to step two. It's, it's enough for me to take it. It's tacky enough to take paint, but yeah, it's not dry. It's so tacky. So tacky. When Once oh, you start you, controlling Patty. temperature in your home, uh, when you turn the heaters on, when you turn the air conditioners on, um, it starts to pull moisture out of the air, and then sometimes you'll put humidifiers on to put it back, and it can make everything a little bit wild. In, in in the world. Now, I'm going to take a filbert brush, but that's to sketch. And I'm going 
to orient this as a landscape, as you can see, that's a really popular picture orientation. Uh, as an artist, I like to think about all the places the painting can live and what it can do. And I do think about whether it's a, a portrait, which is the vertical, or a horizontal. You gave me chat! How is that? E. Kerrigan, a commercial during the live show? No! Yo, <laughs> <laughs> I get how you feel. Let's start to divide this landscape though right this landscape orientation of a painting and i'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and i think my burnt sienna together you guys know i love making a gray with this and that's what i'm going to sketch in because it's such a neutral sketch and i'm going to come here and if this is the halfway point of the surface i'm going to go ahead and sketch a little downward hill like like effect right there and then I'm going to come over here and about in the same area but not a complete and other twin I see Patty Hoffman in the house and Sandra I've got a second monitor over here that I get to look at so you'll see me orienting yeah. over there every once in a while thinking while, 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 while you're doing that I'm gonna now that's that's pretty lovely I like that and I'll go ahead and make a level horizon line there I'm going to wiggle a line. I want you to follow my ziggle, my wiggle and my ziggle. So notice that that brush sort of wiggles back and forth. I'm going to come out towards the right and go back. My eventual end to this location will be here on the left-hand side. And I'm going to just very lightly put that in. And let's go ahead and lightly come in here. Put some lines going back, out. Uh, I could go even further out, I think. That's pretty nice. So I think that that's a very good bisection of the surface. And just by making these little lines, I've already started to create environment, haven't I? So I want you to pay attention to when you start to really see the composition and when you start to see it all come together, because that's a lot of, oh, never do that again. That's a lot of where our paintings come from. Now, I don't want my lines to move. Um, if you're using the traceable, this is when you will have put it on. If you've got the traceable, then you know what the painting is. So you don't get the fun of not knowing. That's only for the guys that come on the live, but you can still like, you could probably hide it from yourself if you wanted to. So you could play along, I would think, on replay. Don't you guys think? The bug is like, we'd be streaming. Kaylin says, maybe it is a man from Snowy River. Now you just made me think of that. <laughs> that Snowy River man. Thank you. Love that movie so much. Oh, man. So, check into all my little things over here at work, and I had to, uh, <laughs> had to find all of the right buttons and all of the right things. A little, little chaotic today, getting things going. Oh, happy... Happy day to all of the peoples and all over the places I see wishing us well wishes. Wishing so us nice. well wishes. We wish the well wishes back to the well wishers. I wish all the well wishes back to the well wishers. Oh, it's so good to be with you guys today. I hope you're well. I hope you're happy. I hope everyone you love is okay and safe. That's what I mostly just wish for everybody's families now. You guys are okay. You've got food on your table and you're safe. Now back here, I'm going to want to create a sort of misted effect. I will go back ahead into my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna to create my gray. And I'll go ahead and add a smidge of the white. And right here, I've got glazing liquid. Did I go over the colors? Please tell me I did. Okay. You did indeed go over the And colors. I'm going to come to the bottom. And brush that out. I think I need a little more white into it. Now the glazing liquid is one of my very, very, very favorite things. There we go. That's a little better. Look at that. You can actually see that now. Brushing that back. I am still using my one inch oval mop. And the glazing liquid, you can do this without it, but it does really make the job of both glazing and blending incredibly simple and doable.
Now, as I'm going out towards these outer sides, I'm going to want to darken this, and I'm actually going to kind of probably darken it coming in on a V. So I'll grab a little bit more of my blue and my brown together. Make a much darker gray color, brushing it down at an angle. And again, this is all pretty diffused. So that's pretty forgiving. So we're going to be coming there in a V angle. Could I what? If you had a black canvas, you could just start with that. No problem. Oh, goodness, yes. And I highly recommend buying black canvases when you see them on sale. A lot of times they use a specialty gesso to do that. It's just a slightly higher quality experiential gesso than regular gesso. So I, when I see them go on sale, I like to grab them. Mm -hmm. So you can see I'm creating a blended effect. Is what we're doing is we're creating the atmosphere. A little more brown or a little more blue, it's all okay. We just want a dark value. Oh, Coral's like, great, we're guessing now. <laughs> <laughs> is it a tree? Look, we'll go back to, you know, doing things like our way, the way you guys are used to. But every once in a while, it's good to shake up even how you learn your lessons. Um, one of the things I do is I'm in my group all the time with my students and I'm painting live with you guys on Zoom now on Patreon and I'm just really paying attention to your experience and I can see that doing some exercises to help the skills you're learning with me become long term skills, skills that you don't need a reference for, that you understand why they work. That'd be so good for you as painters. And so doing this sort of like you don't know exactly what you're doing. Painting is helping you learn to develop those more core, deep art skills, right? And I get that it's a little nerve-wracking to follow along and not totally know where you're going. But that's really what I do every time I get together with you guys and paint. Yeah. <laughs> I don't always know where I'm going. Let's call this a step that's looking pretty good. We got it the really basic values good. going here. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I think I'm going to come here and add a little bit more white and glazy medium. Maybe we'll try, uh, let's be a little wild and try some of my cad red. I know, risky. Risky. <laughs> Did you just say risky? Risky. Too? <laughs> risky. It's so risky. It is. I'm coming right up here, more central. And what I'm going to want to do is create a haloing of light. We've been talking about it all year. This whole year has been brought to you by the journey of light, hasn't it? So kind of the haloing of light. I've added more glazing medium. I'm brushing this down. And I'm going to show you how I can take this from streaky to blended pretty easily. But I do want a little more... Not blood red, but just a little more pink in the sky. Just perhaps a little more pink. And then maybe towards that center, a little more yellow. Now, I'm going to put this brush in my water. I'm going to grab one like it, but that is dry. And before any of this has a real chance to dry, I'm going to come through with my dry, clean brush. And blend this out a little bit, softly blend it out. So that's what's real hard sometimes in not just acrylic, but even in winter scenes, is there's a lot of value based, how light or dark it is, atmospheric effects. Now, as I'm coming down here, if I'm having any trouble, I can get my glazing medium back on my brush and look, it will take that paint that has not dried yet and kind of reactivate it, allowing me to. Blend it out. Sometimes I see artists use water. The only issue that can come up with you on using water on that to reactivate is that, see how it starts to lift paint here just a little bit? Water will do that really intensely. So sometimes you can't lift the color 
or move it with the water. You've got to move it with a medium because the water is too strong of a solvent for that moment. So we're just building this area up. I'm going to go ahead and get a little paint on here. I want a really like deeply, deeply, almost looks like oil, moody kind of sky. So I know I'm into a couple layers to get there. You can see I'm just dusting this with a little more of the red. Not what we would normally do. In fact, that would be normally pretty scary. Hmm. Oh, are you just, I wow, just I like it. That's wow. Yeah, just, just a wowie. Just dusting this down here. Am I working? Yeah, I'm working. Are you working? Probably. Now, it's very important to keep this soft and muted. That's because I've, we are going to pull this color in, I think, maybe in a big way. I think it's fun to pull red into anything that involves winter because um, it's such a big. Big color for the season. It's just really, I mean, those polar bears and Coca-Cola, right? So you can see I just keep working it and soft, softening it and softening it and softening it. And if I wanted to expend another brush, any other brush, but another brush to soften it even further, I could. Look at that. So I'm even having a very fussy day on my acrylic paint where my acrylic paint is being fussy and difficult and I'm still getting there with the use of my mediums and my wet palette and the tools that I'm using. So I think it's important conceptually that as painters, especially as new painters, you guys know that not only are there weird little differences between the environment of the studio of the teach but also from each of your painting session from one time to the next your humidity could be different some days everything works the way you expect and some days it's just a weird batch of paint and having a lot of tools to fade your painting but that you're like yeah that's what i was going for it's developing those tools and those resiliencies in the creative process now i do want to dry this I'm so sad. I'm like such you. a kid going oh, out with that. Yeah, I want to dry it thoroughly, and I'm going right. to drink my coffee. Okay, you do that, and I'm going to check it on. So we seem to have something weird going on with our ad broadcast, too. Are you guys uh, I'm not seeing... Back I think from might... outer space. Sorry about that little glitchiness. I'm not sure what you guys must have may have missed there, but it was a, it was a technical thing. It was a technical thing. That we hopefully fixed. Well, I am going to grab, I think, probably okay, a so D brush. Next step. Yeah, we're going to go on to the next step. Maybe I'll just grab, I'm going to grab this D brush. Brand new, fresh, 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 fresh. Number eight textura. So this, the D brush is a, basically, it's the shape of a filbert and the shape of a round blender. Like a round blender got cut in half. You could just use a filbert. You could use a bright hair. I'm going to take uh, my blue and my brown again together, and I'm going to add a little white into it, and I'm going to look for a cool gray. And come back here. I like these brushes because they build up well, but also um, because they've got a good blend. I'm going to just work in this gray through this area where I can and try to find my line. So I'm really thinking about the way these lines move in relationship to each other and, you know, how that could feel to the viewer, right? The way those lines hold them and intrigue them and make them curious. Um, just because you're new at painting doesn't mean that you don't think about things as deeply. Maybe kind of bring that out. I really want to have some interesting. And the other thing I can do is I can go back and come back with black sometimes 
to play with it. So if I'm like, I feel like these are two same, same, and I want them to have a bit of a difference, or maybe I want it to go back or whatever I want it to do, I can come back with my black and still uh, get it there, even if I feel it overpainted from something else. I'm just coming on here and pulling in these lines. All I'm doing here is just painting everything a base color. Mm, just paint it in. I haven't had to worry about brush directionality. That isn't my worry yet. You could, if it's something you really struggle with, Make sure that your brush strokes, you know, kind of flow with the slope. But for the most part, you should be uh, more than okay here. Now, I might come back with my black again. Make sure that I'm pulling in interesting negative spaces All right so if if the hill is what i'm thinking about and what i'm wanting to do is create interesting negative spaces this is where i could do that at and that's just sort of the wander of these lines right here Let's call that a step. That's a good step. I'm going to get a number 12 round blender out. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a little white and a little glazing medium. And I'm going to come. Mm, I, I could have place here or here, but I think I will. Kind of even go with where I organically had a little more glow. Just adding more glazy medium. And you can see I take this and I, I let it be a little streaky as it goes out. Arcing those lines around and around and around. So what am I doing? I'm creating a, a light source. Right. As a painter, when I'm designing something, I want to create a light source. This isn't something that exists somewhere in the world. This is something that exists inside of me. The pink. Kind of also implying a little radial. Oof. How I make these decisions is I'm working and I'm curving this brush stroke around using the number 12 round blender. How making these decisions is honestly there's a conversation going on with my brain and me all the time and it's making suggestions it goes maybe some pink and i go gosh i don't know and it's oh no you'll like it trust me i've known you your whole life you'll like it and i'm like ah, i don't know sometimes you make bad choices and it's like yeah because i take risks because <laughs> i'm not risk averse <laughs> and i say to my creative brain ah, oh, but i am risk averse <laughs> But you can see we're just kind of creating this little radial sense of things, isn't it? It's another nice aspect of what could be going on there. Oh my goodness, Deb. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Grab a little bit of my yellow here. And I kind of come from the center and work it around. watching the internets going up and down all over the place well i think what anxieties. it is is that a lot of people are probably like we are going i'm just going to go online man this is just too much it it's is. just too much the grocery shopping was too much and there's just a lot happening and i can't even imagine trying to get together with a family that has a lot of strong and polarized and different opinions right now that would be very intense it's never been easy 
but I imagine right now it's harder than ever. And sure, so it's I mean, nice like, to be able to get together with your art friends you, and not worry about any I, of it. I, I hate the holidays when you get the pumpkin spice people on one side and the hazelnut on the other. And you're like, I just want regular coffee, yo. You tell a joke. Just regular coffee. You tell a joke. But I'm going to tell you a true story, John Cooney. They're that crazy right I, now. I know. You I, can't talk do, about pumpkin spice latte. Do you know how hard it is? I can't admit. I'm going to admit it to you right now. I like pumpkin spice latte, and I'm anything but basic. And also, why would we attack anyone because they like a flavor? Because they like something. And do you know how hard it is in my oh, house? Oh, Brie, thank you so much. Oh, my goodness, John. There's coffee. a whole bunch. I've missed two. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I've no, missed no, two. No, no, I think it was Patty. Patty. So and Bree, Bree and and Deb. And Deb and Patty. Yeah, Thank so you, you so much, guys. I'm so appreciated. So, can you microwave this for me, baby? Thank you so much. I'm having the nicest Thanksgiving. It is very nice Thanksgiving. I am going to get back into one of my mop brushes because I just like them so much. And I'm going to come over here and kind of, let's let's start to think about our distant, distant world, our our background world. A little blue, a little brown into a nice gray. And I'm going to just sort of tap up and down, I think, here. To start to maybe imply. Shouldn't look like TV snow. It should just be a gray. Should be pretty deep. And you can see it's just coming forward. My monitor, I'm trying almost not to look at it, John. Oh, no, 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 like up here. Like, it might be better if the chat's here because the, the color is so, like, blowing my mind. I'm like, I'm looking over. And you can see this gives me a nice, irregular little thing down. And what I want you guys to look at is, oh, wonderful. It is, it is, it's just, I'll look over here then. I'll just look over there. Just leave me that. I don't know. It's just, uh, you can leave, leave me that. Now, so you can see my one inch brush here. And when I tap it up and down, when you stamp it, it makes a pattern, right? And even the very act of stamping it can change the pattern. I also like to turn my brush quite a lot. And so when I'm coming down a line like that, I will probably tend to work a corner and I'm trying to create the sense of these are the little edges of leaves. This is a 1264 Fabriano multimedia pad. I like to use them to practice brush strokes, techniques, and color mixes. And you can kind of see the color there. So it's not that hard to do. That is all we are doing. You come with coffee because you are a very good child. We're cruising right along on this one. Yes, we are. But you don't know how big a painting it is. That's it true. could be. It, is it a is it a three hoot? Is it a two hoot? You don't know. I you you have to paint along to find out. <laughs> so I'm going to stamp this again, just like we talked about. And remember, we talked about having a V line kind of coming in, cradling our scene. Looking pretty good. So that's what you're wanting is that nice basis of a scene cradling in. I'm going to rinse that out. Go ahead and get a little white on my number 12 round blender. And dust in a little, just barely... Barely kind of worked in little light there. I'm going to come in with just a little more gray. Are there any questions, Mr. Cooney? I don't know. Oh, I do have chat, but I haven't been watching it. 
Surprise! Okay, it's already beautiful. <laughs> I think I want to kind of come here and maybe work in a. It's too light. So when I get there and I'm like, oh, that's too blue, I add the brown to it. That's how I'm finding the color. And I'm trying to find the value. What we're looking for here is this idea that there'll be enough contrast, perhaps. You could do this with a sponge, by the way. A similar technique, this similar idea, or very slowly, one little line at a time is also acceptable. One nice thing about this is that the neutrality of the color palettes on these types of scenes lets you really focus on line and value. honestly think my 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 honest opinion is that you guys knowing a little less about what you were going to paint might be good for you <laughs> just to help you learn the techniques and 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 anchor on those predominantly i'm going to blend this out a little bit i think i may darken these outer corners but i want some more value range light or dark for me to be able to add mid-ground objects so sometimes that's why i'll come in and be like you know i think you need a little you need to line up now as i come here i can always get right back into my burnt sienna It's all right if I come here and I kind of deepen that. We don't mind. It's a little like a mist or a deep shadow can be coming in at an angle like this through here. And that's just to get some of that depth back. But we've added some more strata. Celtic peasant, thank you so much. I really want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys. And I hope this surprise of a painting is a great way to celebrate. You can see that that just starts to build up. All right, I'm going to rinse, 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 rinse. I'm going to dry everything. Dry, 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 And it's, YouTube has is, is, is been giving me lots of little warnings. I think that it's, there's so many people on the intertubes today, so we may have to... Keep that in mind. Man, this is starting to look cool. You can start seeing the snowy sky thing coming together and the little... The, 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 I like I like the, the mystery game when she does this, where it's like, you're not going to know what you're going to get to see until the very end. Um, so I kind of enjoy doing this stuff. And I enjoy being here with you guys. So thank you for doing this crazy... I guess... I guess it's kind of crazy, where we get together and paint all the time. But yeah, I like it. I love it. I love it. Kel, I completely agree with you. Kel says, my heart is with everyone who's alone this holiday season. This community is full of love. Uh, and Little Bell's like, Rebel, I'm like, I'm getting homemade hamburgers. No, that's what I'm doing. And Krista is working on a secret Santa. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to continue sort of uh, designing and thinking out what I want to do. Oh, I don't have chalk, so I get to do this in paint. That's always fun. <laughs> Oh, wait, there's chalk. I like chalk to think about things because it, it lets me 
add objects, figure out scale and do stuff and change my mind if I need to. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to come, I'm going to make a straight line. Because what am I challenged, John? We know how I'm challenged, don't we? Then I'm going to make an arc. Nope. So my arcs, one of the things I'm going to say on this arc, I want try to be gentle with it. You're going to want to have a gentle slope on the arc. And then you're going to want to give yourself a mirror of it. Right. So what you have is sort of a straight line across your black wiggle. You're going to have a shallow, gentle arc going over and another shallow matching arc coming underneath. Okay. Why do you have that? You must wonder. You're probably like, I don't know. It's so crazy. I do. Why do I have it? All right. Now I'm going to get a small angle, probably small angle brush because it'll give me some control and then oh, that's a good small angle it's a half inch angle brush I'm gonna come here and grab a little black that's cool well, thank you Robin thank you so much now, at this base, I'm going to widen it and then come out straight flat on the line. Now coming from back here, I'm going to take a little bit of the, I haven't really rinsed my brush out perfectly. And I'm going to go back and forth with a little bit of this paint. Can you see that? Let's get a little white going. I haven't really rinsed out my brush. A very light touch here. Light touch. This is the way I can lean, right? I, can't re I can never remember which one it is. Okay. I'm going back and forth. And I'm going to come into my black. Thank you, Valerie. And I'm going to make short little lines out. A little shorter, shorter. And as the further they go back, the shorter they're going to go. Mark this little black right here. Get some red. Well, it's still wet. I'm going to pull a vertical drawdown. See, I'm drawing it down vertically. Short, drawing it down vertically. I'm following my nice arcing line. And again, I want you guys to understand that for me, this is basically my experience, most paintings. What you're doing here with me is, is me in my own head, most paintings. I'm just talking to myself, <laughs> guiding myself through a design. Just want to bring that down a little bit. Dramatic, fun line okay I think I may I may also while we're here before we move on 
um, get a little bit of blue and white mixed together. Just kind of come over that for just a second. It should not be white, white. I may even need to gray that back further. Okay. Let's call that a step and continue on. Thank you, Vera. Vera? Vra? Vera? Thank you so Thank much, you guys for Vra. So much for all I'm that support here. Using a number six. Gosh, I love it. Using a number six Raphael sepia round. I like it because it doesn't make me mad. I'm gonna come above here, and I'm gonna make a little vertical line. It's gonna be thicker at the bottom. And then as I bring it up, it's going to taper and become finer. It will wander until it is a fine and disappearing line. I'll bring some weird little lines off of that. try to not create forks right i don't want to make forks i want to make opportunities that's the thing that i think of when i paint uh trees hopefully you have guessed by now that this is a tree um i like to create opportunities for my tree to thrive to um get resources and to compete with the other trees in the area and be part of the tree community. I don't know what to tell you, but I do. I think about those things a lot. Like this tree, um, and I know it's not unique because I think back to when I used to watch Bob Ross as a kid, right? Is that sometimes a tree has a background story, even in my painting, in my head. Uh, I think whenever you look at a painting in a gallery, there's a background story that we may all not be aware of. Oh, I like that weird little tree. <laughs> But we should give more trees. Just fun to put them in, isn't it? It's like the forest shows up. Cannot see the forest for the trees. Now I know I might push some of this back into a mist or an atmosphere, right? It might happen. At this point, um, does anybody have any guesses of what we're painting? Time of day? Love subject you. matter? Love you too, April. Thank you, April. I like to bring interesting little moments. One of the things painting on my own that sometimes happens that can be a little different than when I'm painting with you guys is I will choose different things sometimes on a lesson than I do for myself just because I'll be like, oh, that'll be hard to duplicate. So uh, doing an imagination paint like this, maybe I don't protect you from those moments as much. And that's good, though. Mm, that's too far down. That makes no sense. It can't live there. So I was just painting along in a zone and realized that tree can't grow there. <laughs> it just moved it. Peggy Sterling. What's the red? I'm going to relieve your mind. This is a calm, serene, safe scene. And the red is in no way uh, blood in water or anything. It's not that. Don't worry. That's not the kind of painting we need right now. What we need is a calm moment where the scene is safe and secure and cozy that was that was something i kind of pre-decided in my mind for you guys is that we wouldn't be painting something that was intrinsically upsetting to paint 
because I feel like the world is covering um, all the upsetting character challenges that it could possibly cover in every way it could cover, and we're all maxed out. Maria Camp, thank you so much. Ah, Denise Magical Emporium's like, it looks like a waterfall. I love the guesses. And I know it's tough to guess because you're like, what if I'm wrong? And then everyone will know that I'm wrong. But the act of guessing is a bit of what I do sometimes. I'll be in a painting and be like, I wonder what this is going to be. I have literally walked into a painting, today being an example, right? Where you're just like, I don't know where it's going to go. Usually I might not talk the whole way through because I'd be concentrating real hard <laughs> on where it's going to go. So for me also as a teacher, it's always interesting to see how the act of teaching it, I'm bringing upward lines, drawing these lines, and I'm weaving the trees in. Some of these will sort of be pushed back into like a, maybe a misty atmospheric effect. So you can be a little braver here. Oh, Celtic, pe Celtic peasant. Is it Celtic or Celtic? I always do this wrong. I always go basketball. Celtic. So sorry, it's my brain. Right. Um, so this is the very best thing I love of hearing you talk your process out. It's extra teaching and it's awesome. It is extra teaching. And I think that that is one of the fun things that I've learned to do being on YouTube is to share in the moment what is live happening inside my head. Like, like an example would be when I make a tree, you'll see my brush stop and start in uh, different speeds of motion. And that little subtle activity creates thicknesses and thinnesses in the paint, which helps create the organic random feeling that you want in a tree. And it's a weird thing. Like I can say I'm doing it. But I've got to even stop to think of it that I'm doing it, if that makes sense. All right, that looks fairly nice. I like those quite a lot. Let's dry everything here because for the next technique, they've got to be a little bit dry for it to work. Yeah. We'll go on to the next step here after this. <laughs> and yeah, this is, uh, this is turning out to be pretty cool. I like how the, the scene is coming in, a little, all the... Uh, the background trees and the sky is really pretty cool. So I'm excited to see how this forms together. And just thank you guys for coming and hanging out while we're doing all this today. It's been pretty fun. So far. Yeah. So far, pretty darn fun. Get you a new step. A new step. I'm going to get my number 12 round out. Sip my coffee again. I really like this painting. I'm going to get a little bit of my white over here. Now my white has a bit of the brown and blue in it. So it's not pure white. It's a little off cast. I might even want to bring it to a blue more. And then a lot, a lot of my glazing liquid. And I'm going to come here and maybe get a little darker in the blue, create a kind of distant mist. It is curling kind of brush strokes, and I may even pull out my pad to show you guys. It's going to push things back. It's pushing it back. And the trick is you've got to have it transparent enough that the pigment, you can see me really working my brush that the pigment doesn't cover up everything we've done behind. I'm not gonna paint out this tree, but I will come forward here. And put a little bit at this base. Now like here, behind this line, this curving line, I'm trying not to tell you what the objects are, so if you're guessing, you're still getting the guess. And I'm just trying to make sure. And I will sometimes get a finger involved. Look at that. 
Sometimes a finger is the best tool. You just have to be aware of if you have any interactions with this uh, uh, product at all. So like anyone can have an allergy to paint. Any paint. Non-toxic kid paint. Anyone can have an allergy to paint. Anyone can have an allergy to shampoo. Um, and so it is important to check all, all art products that you work with for your ability to tolerate them. Because some people can be really, really sensitive to the polymers or the sulfacants, the surfacants, and just basic acrylic paint or any, any paint, any pigment, anything. I'm just smooching it out. So what I'm trying to get here is a transparent kind of glaze of paint that has variance in where it's thick and it's thin so that it gives us that effect of maybe being in the mist. I layer on a little more glaze and I'm going to come into my white. And when you see me do that, then what I'm doing is I'll paint up a little mist. Where it's maybe. A little more focused and the purpose to that is the purpose of this particular. effect is to show that some of it is more concentrated. If you think about it, these type of effects are generally just low lying clouds or low lying moisture. So they will have areas that are lighter, darker, lots of variants. I think that looks pretty good. Be happy with that. Come here and get a little bit of my gray. On my brush, it's got some glaze on it. It's got less color than you might expect. And I'm gonna come here and make some little vertical lines coming down. Wiggle out there, back and forth. That's looking good. All right. I don't know I need to dry anything right now per se. This is where we're at on our brushes so far. So we're doing pretty good. I've got a bunch of more stuff to put in and I'm trying to decide if I want to put it in how I want to put it in and I think I want to put it in I'm trying to decide between a filbert and a fan they're both fun I might I might start with a little fan so this is a number two Raphael Artini hog bristle fan brush. I have I have videos on why you want a fan and what fan you want. If you've had any problems with fans, it will help you with that. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of my glazing medium on here and some white. I'm going to come right here and kind of just tap up a down. It might even need to be a little grayer. That's what I think I'll be looking for here is a value lighter than the background, but still not super bright. And we'll see if we like this. My handle's kind of vertical. If my handle's vertical, that'll help the branches be straight. If my handle's down, huh? Just kind of bringing that here. Bringing it down. 
Now, as it comes down closer to this, right, if, I, if I'm lighter, that's actually a good thing because I can kind of imply that it's back more in the distant ground. I can also come in and get a little bit of my kind of black ground gray. Maybe having the little parts of this little guy. And I have to decide if I even like it done that way. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like the fan for this. Don't. I'll try my filbert. So I'll go back over what I have with my filbert and I'm going to do similar things, but I want to think about the structures of this tree just a little more. So I'm going over what I have and I'm just building it out. It might make the tree a little wider, but that's okay. So I haven't ostensibly changed that shape. You'll see in a second why I care. I do like it darker down low. I might even come in with a little bit of dark value down here. And so I'm kind of like tabbing up and down just to make sure it's a dark value. Put out some more ultramarine blue. So I can keep making my um, gray color too. How you doing, babe? Yay. Nope, that was Thalo. And yes, I can tell right away. <laughs> Thalo. 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 I have too much Thalo. There it is. Ultramarine blue. Thalo uh, blue and burnt sienna give me kind of a green. Not so much a gray. And was it sitting here the whole time? Yes, it was. That's embarrassing. So you can see I can make that dark gray color. I definitely want to have some of it over here. I'm tapping and pouncing my brush up and down so that I'm not making regular patterns. I'm trying to make a regular pattern. So we're creating that deep value here. Now, back to my lighter white. It's still gray though, right? I always leave room to go up. Okay. And then I might bring one forward a little bit back. I'm just tapping that brush up and down. You see coming over to the left and then I can center up. So I can make these little areas that are highlights on branches of snow. See how you can see it now? It's not that the fan brush isn't a great fun technique, it is. But sometimes the trees that you guys are trying to paint or I'm trying to paint just don't lend themselves to that technique. And that's why you want to have a few techniques in your little brush bucket so that when you're trying to paint kind of in the misted distant little trees. Let's see, I'm bringing little branches over. 
it can help if you don't have a strong visual library. In other words, like distinctly remember how to paint trees. If you're like, ah, I'm not real sure how to paint a tree, that would be an indicator that you may not have a deep, deep memory for it. Right? I'm going to just make a um, lighter gray, but not as light as before. And I think I will. Add some little light shelves of leaves here. Not quite the same. Okay, I'm just using the edge of the brush. That's just creating a little bit of making a darker gray but it will be lighter than what's behind here i'm just tapping up and down i'm going to make the same triangle that i make with my fan brush i'm just thinking about the the branches a little more and so that one can come in front It's pretty good, and I'll need to give it another highlight for it to really show, but it's the start of something. I can also come back through and add shadows. Creating little negative spaces in the shadows. And it can be too dark on the contrast. Like right now I'd say it's got too much contrast. But I can just tap that in and blend that in. And then come back and really think about the shelves over those shadows. So if I come back with my gray now. Contrast can be compelling. Could also do this with a round brush, probably. Well, that's looking pretty okay in there. Might switch to a round brush. Sometimes switching brushes also does an interesting thing in which it, I'm going to grab some black and see if I can't get this through contrast. I'm going to tap the brush up and down, down the center. And then I'm going to try to paint the contour shape of this tree with my black paint. That way, when I come back with my light paint, 
I will have some nice deep dark shadows. Yeah. I'm going to come in and get some white. I'm using my number six round again. And I'm using that, I'm choosing that because I need to change the shape and control of my brush stroke. Now over here, just real quick, I'm going to come to the tops of the little leaves over here. Just add some little highlights to them. That could be fun. And again, by changing the brush shape, then I can piece out what is individual little leaves. And that can be really nice. So I'm going to try to come down here and say there's an individual branch right there. Just try to get some more shading and shaping. Make the structure more readable. Yep. A lot of times what goes wrong for us in the painting is, is not necessarily, oh, you painted that wrong or, you know, there's this only one way to paint a thing. A lot of times what it is is it's just not readable becomes visually unclear um, and honestly that's a style right now among artists that you can't even say that's definitively wrong because I see some very young artists pushing that idea of when is something readable and when is it not and using values and colors and different things to really push those envelopes So another thing to think about when you're painting is to not paint things always the exact same way, right? I'm getting a much darker gray. Painting in some little branches on this tree. Now these are, these are again, a darker gray. I'm gonna go ahead and make little kind of lines. Those could be branches that are more facing me. This is a dark gray. That's why I needed that contrast. So I'm putting this on these highlights, these snow highlights on the top of this structure, this tree structure, differently than this tree structure and these tree structures, which gives me different types of trees. So one of the things that can happen to you as a beginner when you're trying to design original work is you have one tree you do with a fan brush. And it, it's fine because maybe you're talking about pine trees. Maybe that's what you're painting. 
but because you only have one tree in your little brush bucket <laughs> that you can pull out, there's this sort of um, maybe monotony or uh, frustration that we can get in the painting with that. I'm going to come back into this uh, kind of dark gray that's lighter than the background with my fan brush, my number four. So having these different types of marks to speak about different types of trees is just really fantastic. And come back here and you can see it's just a shade. Lighter. But it does start to create a different different layer. Oh, uh, the bug is saying about the two pack from the store and she they love them. Judy, happy Thanksgiving. Silver, can you uh, draw Void Termina from Kirby Straw Allies? Not without overexciting all the teens in my house. Right. Can do. Yeah, I can. I would be a fun thing to do. I don't I know how litigious who owns the Kirby Nintendo? property. Nintendo then I'm sorry, it cannot. Nintendo tends to be pretty, pretty aggressive about that. Like I might do something like that in a patron class in the Zoom or where Nintendo might not find me. <laughs> <laughs> um, some companies are really just. I might risk it, but I could get a strike. They they are. They do things like they take monetization. If you use any of their property in any way, they take the monetization of your video. So it's like, yeah. And then also, ah, Nintendo. Right. It's just one of those things, right? Okay, let's continue on. We're having a blast. New step here? We're going to do new step. New step, new step, new step, new step. I told you you're welcome, Virgo. I'm going to make being here with you. some more blue into my gray blue color here, but this time it's more blue, blue, more blue, 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 kind of just a little bit. I just, the first one time I did it, I felt like I did too much. Now I'm going to come here and. Just highlight in the distance, maybe. Just fine in little moments. Thinking. Thinking. I like the wiggle back here, so I'm going to use that. The reason I like it is it, it gives um, a soft and diffused line, which I don't want a sharp line here in the distance. I want it to feel out of focus. Um, that, that action of not making the line sharp and clear helps tell the brain that this object isn't in our, isn't in close proximity to us. Can see it's more dry brush as I go back. And I'm I'm just trying to wiggle the brush and create a it's there, but it's just super duper diffused. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of my red and black together. And bring a little bit of red line, but it's it's not perfect red line, guys. 
this one is going to be hard. Um, what I'm going to do to help myself and to help you is I'm going to just take this moment and give myself another little chalk line, maybe, if it'll help me. Where did I put the red? The yellow chalk. I'll do that. So everybody's really loving your positive energy. I think about a half inch is the height I'm going to want. I'm going to arc that back. I'm trying to make a parallel line to the one that I have. Be as good of an architect as you can. Then the lines that we're going to be making in relationship to this will be vertical. So I think I'm going to start right here and do my best with my red and black to make. A nice hefty kind of half inch vertical line. These should relate to each other. In fact, all of these should relate to each other. There is a way to math this. <laughs> I don't do it. You should do it. I tend to kind of eyeball it and hope it works out. So I've got my little vertical lines. Below the tops of them. And then at the top of this one. Yeah, let's just go wild maybe and do all of them. Because that just makes interesting negative space. It does. Right? Very interesting negative space. So knowing that that is there helps me. A little black and red again. Mm. Just trying to make sure I've got nice contrast. Now I'm going to make a run of vertical. And again, that's the red and black. There we go. We have the start of something. It is. I come underneath this with some black. It's a fine line. And you can move things, you can change things, background colors. So don't feel like you can't. If there's something that you don't like, feel like, oh, I can go, I can go through here. Mm -hmm. We're going to lay snow in some interesting ways. Curtis, how are you doing today? And Amethyst Rock, uh, okay, no time zones different. It's only 9.33 and it's almost done. Huh. <laughs> All right, so this is doing fairly well. Let's call that a step, and we'll let that have a little moment. And I think I'm going to work on my world a little bit. There you go. So let's take a little bit of our uh, ultramarine blue and our titanium white and our burnt sienna. And we'll say, I'm going to add some, since I put it out by mistake, I'll add some phthalo in. So doesn't not get used. Doesn't matter. I'm just creating a snow color. I will want it to be cooler, more blue. Bringing 
bring some of this darker blue back. Yeah. Coming in from the background darker, and then I'm going to, I think as I come forward, lighten it up. Should be a little bit big right there. I have to uh, think about this reflection a little bit for the positioning of that snowbank. That's okay. So I'm just letting you guys know that. I'm darkening my snowbanks right here. I don't want them to be too light uh, near the shoreline. Me kind of working out shadows, and then I'll come back into some lighter colors and try to make sure that things look like they, um, you know, that that but some type of light is hitting them, but it's it's still not too bright or too direct. A little more brown in that. And then I'll be very light as I brush back, so I don't want to want to keep it darker back there. Let me just kind of getting into the brown and blue, just trying to make sure that I've got it darker back here. So yeah, we're just pulling that forward, and just those values are what we're trying to. This is a really cool one. I'm going to add a little bit of snow right there, I think. I'm just thinking about trying not to repeat every shape exactly like the last one. Keeping that value interesting, how light or dark it is. Right? Yep. And not radically changing the time of day. Have we? Do we have a guess of when this is, when this scene is? Midnight? So we're thinking night. I'm thinking maybe. So now we, we're painting, uh, and I did kind of throw this for you guys. I didn't go, do you want to paint a winter scene at night? I didn't say that. But, you know, we painted a lot of, I went through my catalog and I was like, we painted a lot of this one thing. So I'm like, maybe we'll paint this, which we haven't really done before. Yeah. So I'm adding more light value and I'm trying to find the top. Of like. Sometimes it helps to press that brush down. And the reason for that is, is it creates that feeling of clumpness because snow tends to clump. It's okay to dry brush with snow. It's okay to layer thick. It, it's actually pretty. Pretty darn forgiving. I'm lightening it up. So one of the things that's hard to kind of explain as a teacher to you guys is I'll get asked questions from a very absolute stance because when you're when you're new to art things feel like they'd be like other things in the world and have really known yeses and nos and 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 strong rules and all of that stuff and there's certainly some of that present in art but it's actually much less present than you think. But as a teacher, you know, we've got to answer questions from where the student is at i'm adding more brown into this mix and kind of uh making sure its value is darker so uh with our students a lot of times the answer is sometimes but you give them a more guided a, a more guided answer so that they right. can get through the painting successfully is what it is but sometimes there's a more nuanced way through Or there can be many nuances. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. I asked John if things make sense a lot because what will happen is a very, uh, my brain can skip a track in a conversation completely and not tell me. 
everyone. So I have to check in every once in a while to make sure I, st- I finish a topic where I started. Mine does too, so that's okay. Yeah, that's why I'm always asking him. But it's not that I'm asking John permission for how I think or anything. <laughs> I'm just checking in with the person who's been with me like 27 years. Like, what am I, am I doing the thing? You know that thing. Yeah. Now notice how this has really become, I just wanted to do one side and focus and can you see how on this half of the painting that feels much more like snow, doesn't it? Yeah. Now I might dry brush some of that back there. Kind of pulling that back. Yeah. I'll dry brush that through. I don't want it bright because, but it's on the other side of the bridge, so it would have more light on it. Man, then. that just came together so cool. And then there's, I'll have to change those values just real fast, and then as soon as I have that, I'm gonna continue to add a little lightness here. Be patient. You have a second to find the color. You have a second to find the light. You don't have to have it all worked out right now. I had no idea, you know, what we were going to be doing when I put these up. Like, I didn't know what you guys were going to vote on. I did not have control over that. And I, and I felt comfortable being in that position because I know that I'm going to be able to come in and do a lot of fun stuff. Right? When you're new, you don't know that you have that ability too. So sometimes me doing things like this in this way where I don't even know where we're going and then I've got to figure it out helps you figure it out even in lesson paintings, right? How you can find your way through. I'm just trying to make sure I've got lots and lots of nice value and you got to really think about snow when you paint. When you paint snow, you're really painting snow. You know what I'm saying? Let's switch over to the other side, call another step. I could use a coffee or heat up on my coffee. I think I'm going to be a little more in shadow over here. New step. New step. I am getting my uh, cool snow color and handing John my coffee, and we're going to be working over here. You can see I'm just kind of working that through, improving the coverage, and then I'm going to start laying it out to be interesting with the negative space and everything. Just taking that blue and brown that makes this that cool, cool winter night color. The other color I could have used besides this cool gray to paint this night with is green. And if you'd like to see the master of that, you look at uh, uh, Frederick Remington and... Um, you will see all of the nightscapes in the West be in green, and it's just gorgeous. So I actually almost did green, but then I was like, it's a lot if you don't know what you're painting to make it also a green scene. Uh... Uh, what if it was leaves hmm uh uh, i would still go green i could still do green or blue whenever you do a nightscape what a winter scene and a nightscape have in common is uh desaturation of color so as I come through and now I've got a nice base and I can start to find my highlights. Just took me a minute to figure out where my base was going to be. I'm mixing more to the blue over here. Mm. 
think I want to put one kind of like maybe a little darker and then oh thank you look at that cool one I did right there I'm loving it this is bothering me but I'm loving the rest of this I'm gonna fix this though that's bothering me I just want the radial to be a little more balanced in the scene it just feels too much like a ball so I'll be fixing that later. Uh, and it wouldn't be green seen if it were that much snow. In fact, you can always use green for a night scene in any season. It's wild. Blue is one. Green is one. It is wild. I've seen both done and it's incredible. I am kind of trying to clump. You can see by this pushing of the brush and making these little clumps, it kind of implies snow a little bit. It does help. So this here would be my bank, and I'm just trying to make sure that the line coming back is fascinating. We're always weird, says Lula Bell. Yeah, no, this is this is what this is. Uh, this community, we are an unusual group of non-typical human beings. We don't... I swear, I very rarely see a poll that I would have necessarily agreed with the vote or, you know, like, for just anything. Uh, I think that as a whole, we, we're, we're the people who are just like, you know... I just have my own drum and I'm going to listen to it. I'm just kind of building up color there. I want it to be lighter than that dark, dark that I have. But if you'll notice, I'm doing it kind of dry in the brush. And so some of that dark, dark is really coming through. And I like that. And I'm purposely leaning into it. Um, I just I just like where it's taking this side of the canvas and how snowy this is, this is on this side of the canvas. And I haven't even made my red bright yet or any of the stuff or... Okay, so one thing I want you guys to vote on right now is do you want any Christmas lights, any lights, like Christmas twinkle lights? They don't have to be Christmas lights. You don't have to celebrate Christmas. But do you guys want any twinkle lights in this winter scene? I need to know that. So if you'll let me know, do you want twinkle lights? And I'm either going to put them in a tree structure or on the bridge. I have not yet decided. But as I've been looking at this, I feel like what I want, especially with this, is I want to really start to exaggerate this light story here is twinkle lights. But you may not want twinkle lights. And I am totally fine. Oh, well, you guys are just like so quick to be like, yes, twinkle lights. Yes. Yes, all the things. Is there a thing that we could learn to paint? Yes, teach me that thing. And I will be like, yes, I will teach you that thing. All right, I'm going to just kind of puff up a little bit of the front of the snowbank here that kind of gathered in front. And you can see I'm wiggling my brush around to capture that. Oh, my goodness, the bug. The bug. You're kind of too nice to us, bug. Love you bunches. Hmm? Okay. Don has, has got to do with the, the food. So we have been left alone for a second. We are all in trouble. <laughs> Hi, Phyllis. How are you doing? And Jessica and Florence and Mary and Sian and April and Sally and Annette and MWB. Hey, Mark. Uh, Bug and Gina and Klupas. Klupas? If I missed anyone, it's because I'm on the... Uh, John has got a screen share over here on my monitor. And I don't have control over seeing the chat. So it's just whatever screen setting he's got it set on. I am not ignoring anyone. I don't have anyone in my life that I wouldn't ignore. There are people I would totally ignore. Um, but you are not them, so don't worry. And they're not coming. How are we doing? 
I, I love all of us who are like, yeah, I'm not cooking right now. <laughs> or I am cooking. I'm just doing something fun while it's cooking. Uh, yes, to learn people don't have to put them in their paintings, says Lori. I agree. And I think Lori brought up a thing that our group has in common, but I think the world has kind of lost, which is that just because I like something, and something is right for me, doesn't mean anybody else has to do it. And I think you're very, very right there is that, you know, people can really decide it's their painting and they can decide what they want to put in it. I think I'm continuing to highlight and play with the highlights on the snow. Um, things that I, I like if I was just. Like I might be tempted on a design like this, just working it out uh, sometimes is doing a painting and then finding references that fit that painting thank you so much shannon jameson thank you I, I i all right we're we're gonna light the bridge but just for fair warning that means that i'm lighting with the the moon the bridge and the lights so you're gonna learn a lot about lighting all of the acrylic april 2021 people went is this water as a mirror lesson did you just sneak a water as a mirror lesson on us because you said you wouldn't do that again i did Water is a mirror. Water at night is a mirror. I'm going to just dry brush through here. And you can see that I'm just building up layers, but I feel like what's happening on this bank is that it's too much like the other bank, so I need to change it. Sometimes I'll connect them. I find that that will change a line on a bank. Where I connect it right there and then push it back. That looks pretty amazing. Trip totally tricked us. I do that a lot. I should stop. All right. So I kind of know where my red is and I can uh, get it a little more under control. I'm going to come in with my black. John, I need a step. I'm going to come in with my black. I just need a step. I don't know what step it is. I just need, step. I need a new step. All right. So I'm going to continue on painting around, kind of making sure that I know where this is, but it's a little bit knocked back. You'll find that even in, in the knockback, that like little glaze of water is not in any way, in any way a problem. Now I'm going to also kind of curve a dark line here. That's pretty good. Seeing that just right now, what I'm trying to kind of capture is what is going on under the bridge, what is happening on the surface. So that when I hit all those reflections and different things that I might be seeing here on the surface, they are really, really good for me. Now, I don't know where I put my glasses. Now I do. Let's really paint up this bridge and add lights. Nope, I'm good. So the bridge was red and black. I can then just add more red paint at first to get some different values. You know, and I might paint in these just a little more thoughtfully now. I'm going to come here and continue to add a little bit of paint to the top of this bridge. So I'll say right now, like candidly, because I, I just don't. It's not that I don't have embarrassment or I don't go through those things just like everybody else. I absolutely do. But I also recognize that art is super subjective. And my goal here is not to be the most perfect, perfect artist on the platform. Um, and I, I don't know, it's just not why I paint. Uh, if I were to do this bridge and I was to give you a recommendation to do this bridge, like if you're a very technical person, it would be to math out the distance between the posts. I don't really care, but I also have been painting long enough to know that sometimes our partners really care or sometimes we really care and caring is okay. Just because I'm relaxed with something about a painting and it isn't at the, my forefront to feel important. I'm just adding the slightly tinted 
uh, red and black, it's a shade or two lighter, right? Just because that's okay with me doesn't mean that it has to be with you, even as a new painter, or that I'm right because I have more experience. Now, like, there's a couple places you might be like, she's got more experience, so I'm going to listen to that, like, studio safety. You really don't want to mess around with studio safety. I'm going to add some red that will peek out of the snowbank there. Uh, I like changing brushes for this painting, says Peggy. I agree. Uh, Kaylin's is like, I had to go for a while, but it's looking pretty good. I'm going to rewatch later. I've been on YouTube for 10 years and I've been through everything, everything on YouTube that you could be through. Every weird experience, all, all, all of the things uh, that, that, that you could remotely be through. And, um, and I've done everything. And one of the things, I have 2,500 lessons total at this point now, which is, you don't have to watch them all. They're just out there if you need them. I have done so many hidden lessons. These are full tutorials that have full paintings that you would never know from the thumbnail that it's in there. There's a whole painting on how to paint underwater. Everyone thinks that's a lesson on how to scuba dive and paint. It's not. And there's a whole lesson. Uh, uh, the Everything you need to know about black lesson has a secret painting all done with chromatic black. Um, there's it. There's a bunch of secret Kevin paintings. Maybe we'll do Kraken today. I'll ask John if he's up for a Kraken. Uh, we could have we could have a Kevin appearance. Kevin could come back. Kevin and a gnome could come back on the secret painting. So we used to do secret hidden paintings that were unlisted. You could only find them through the main painting. I'm using pure red. You could only find the secret tutorial, uh, like if you either took the class or uh, you uh, were in, you found it through the main painting. And that used to be a lot of fun. So this idea that there's these secret lessons, um, when we used to hit like the 100,000 or the 300,000, I would do secret paintings. Um, so they're all over the channel. You can find them. Uh, if you've done one of the secret paintings, uh, I, I would say Kevin is a popular recall. Uh, Kaylin's like, oh, I have been watching the black, black and white one and more. See, you know when someone's deep in my community. I, I'm like, oh, I missed what you said, babe. You asked me a question. I'm, I'm still in the bridge for a second. I will holler up. They might want to do a Kevin. And maybe even, uh, okay. I want to point out that is, does anyone know the author Alaron Kong, who did uh, um, uh, the Mist, the Mist, the Land of Mist series and Mist Village series? I don't know. I'm on book bazillion. I'm just waiting for him. He started writing a whole nother series and I'm like, no, you have to finish Richter's story. So if you know Alaron, then you know that gnomes rule. But I want to point out, in no shade, to such a fabulous author. Uh, I knew Gnomes ruled years before you wrote your first book. Just saying. So when I shout with you that Gnomes ruled, know that this is so many. It's like deep in our knowing that Gnomes rule. So no, Kevin and Zombies was so cool. I agree, Donna. Kevin and Zombies was cool. I forgot about Kevin and Zombies. <laughs> I forgot Kevin had some zombie friends. See, even I forget some of my own secret lessons. What what I'm doing here is I'm building up this color to create this sense of pop on on the bridge. So when we add things later, notice that I'm not putting red everywhere on the tops. And the reason for that, and I will do it a little bit on the verticals, is because with the snow and the lights, there will be some some impact. I can't wait to try this, says Cal, and Little Bell is like, he's our pet. So Kevin is a Kraken, and Kevin, um, we are not your typical YouTube channel. Or we are your typical YouTube channel, but now there's a bunch of professional channels out there. But we are the old school YouTube channel. And back in the day when we were first live, we were so enamored with the fact that any of the equipment worked that we could go live at all we would do these like secret lives and kevin was a kraken and anytime we painted water kevin would make an appearance in the painting and 
Gus. There's a Hidden Mermaid um, Kevin painting. There's just the boat Kevin. There's so many Kevins. Gnome Kevin. Kevin came into a fall thing. Uh, there's a Secret Scream painting. There are Secret Doctor Who paintings. There's a Secret Doctor Who collaboration mystery that I wrote that you have to watch all these videos and you have to be into Doctor Who from the black and white days to solve the mystery. It was maybe a little too much. It was, and I didn't even know about like internet rabbit holes or anything. I just made one up because I was bored. All right, so you can see that we've done that there and that really has popped our bridge. I wanna dry everything though before I do anything else and call it a new step. So if John will give me a step, I'm gonna sip my coffee. Yeah, we can, we can give you a step here, let you finish drying, give you a new step. She'll probably want some more coffee soon. Although we're getting close to the end of the coffee part of the day and on to the meaty part of the day where we cook the, the turkeys and the, the, the roasts and the tofurkeys who are tofu pretending to be turkeys those are those are going to get cooked and eats too i think so ah uh, yeah looking i don't know why i got so lost on drying the painting for a second that's okay weird. i'll give you a new step here <laughs> so crazy all right to do my lights i'm going to go ahead and get some white paint mm. And I'm going to make little scallops of white dots at first. So I don't know what the plan is or everything that's wrong with the car and what you've got to do for repairing. But if you were up to it, like after this painting, we could we could go off. I could take a picture of it yeah. for the traceable and the thumbnail. And then we come back and I could create a fantastical scene where Kevin meets a mysterious being. Well, you know, we don't need, we could just. Uh... We don't even have, we don't have to end it. I can just run upstairs, take a photo, and come right back down. Oh no! I think it'd be fun for it to be secret hidden lesson that you can only find from the painting. Oh, I've been talking about that. Oh, you're right. So at the end of it, you have to know where the link is. You have to up. know where it is. The link will be in the description, and also we always put those videos on the website. That makes sense. Yeah, we can do that. I think I got a little overwhelmed with my dots there. And guess what I get to do? I get to try to do this over here. That's not going to be, that's going to be what's hard. The duplication of lights down here is what's going to get my brain, my ADHD brain uh, going, I can huh. tell. Yeah, I would love a kid to come down. I'll take a kid. So once I have these, I've got to figure out how to create a similar event here. And my best way of doing that always for myself is to turn my surface upside down. I learned this uh, through drawing on the right side of the brain as a young person. And it has been a tool that I have absolutely embraced my whole time. So I'm going to definitely say that the bridge is here. I'm just making sure I've got a good arc. Checking my arc. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm not being exact for everything that's there. I'm going to just capture the shape sometimes you can get the detail of a painting in a in a weird way now i'm going to get some glazing medium in here you make these sort of little vertical lines i hope they're vertical i'll have to correct them if they're not This is a dry brushing, this effect. And again, I wish I could tell you this was a bridge anywhere or this existed or something, but this is just, I would, so when I win that lottery and I figure out how to turn all ads off on YouTube, 
<laughs> I don't have to worry about making any money, and all we do is goop and play. Hello. <laughs> oh, everybody, Spider, my son, is joining us. Look at my boy. Pride is not the word I'm looking for. There's so much more. <laughs> so, uh... Uh, it's been a minute since you've had Spider. I think he was pretty little the last time he was on on, weren't you? I don't, I don't think so. I think it was like 12 or 11 last time I did it. Yeah. I'm that much younger. Is it okay if I talk about your life? Sure, I don't care. You don't care? I don't care. You don't care? Yeah. So close to say. All right, so we've got the vertical. I'm going to turn this back over. Once I have that, I, w I have the architecture to be able to um, create the whole effect. Oh my goodness, Donna Cox came in with the, with the Kevin. Uh, <laughs> April's like, Kevin meets a snowman. Do you want to eat a snowman? Do you want to crunch his ice? Okay, I'm fine. Once this is dry... Then what I can do is I can go through and I can take, I'm going to use glazing liquid. And I'm still going to use my round brush and I am going to kind of go around some of these little areas with some yellow. Not all of them. All your lights to be yellow. You only want some of them to be. Yellow. Only some of them to be yellow. And remember, if you have any uh, sensitivity to CAD, you don't want to touch it. I don't. Um. That's pretty good. I'm not minding that. Now, yeah. I put out this thalo blue by mistake earlier. <laughs> so uh, happy accident. I'll make some green. Um. You don't have to have green. You can have any of your favorite colors that you like. I do try to think about if I put them up there to kind of think about the water. We might do Kevin today. Kevin the Kraken Spider. Mm. He might make an appearance. That would be interesting. I think so. Some yellow here. I think I need more yellow there. Make sure that the light reflection on the... Uh, Amethyst is like, yes, the lights on the bridge was a good choice. You guys are good designers. Thank you for helping me design today. They're super good designer, Spider. I'm going to do some blue because I think sometimes Christmas lights have blue. I don't doubt that they very much are very good designers. Hmm? I don't doubt that they're very good designers. You don't doubt it? I don't doubt it at all. You're so sweet. Thank you. I'm pretty much hitting all the rest of them with some blue. Just because it's a it's a good color for the the painting. Yeah. So I'll add a little more focus blue in some spots. That's kind of nice, isn't that a beautiful like reflecty reflecty? Yeah. I am not minding that. That is kind of okay. Is it an icy river? Or I haven't decided yet. Right now, because the reflections are as crisp and bright as they are, it is not icy yet. Okay. If I diffuse them, then it's icy. I'm mm. going to add a little bit of a white spot in the center of my lights. And the reason for that is I just was de-skinning my paint because we've been out here a second. Someone was asking that if I paint, I do not. I'm not really a painter. Spider uh, wrestles. He's on the wrestling uh, club team. Team, yeah. Team. And um, he plans uh, right now to go into... Is it okay if I say? I don't care. And if you know about this or you have anything you'd like to say, and, and it's positive, 
but like helpful things because this is this is very different. You remember um, Alex P. Keaton? <laughs> Anybody remember Alex? Spire is kind of our Alex and uh, in our family, and he would like to go into the Air Force as a commissioned officer. Is that correct? I do believe so. And so we are super, super supportive of that. Um, and so we're finding out all about that. Um, uh, the bug says, I wrestled in high school. That's cool. So the bug, Luna Bella is wrestling. And I was trying to explain to Luna Bella that when we were young, when we were kids, uh, that was a huge deal. Like that made national news. So did, did you make news with your wrestling is what I'm wondering. Um, was that still making the news when you wrestled? And then, uh, I'm still coming in here with the, with the other thing. So yeah, Spider's super excited. He's going to do Air Force. You want to fly what kind of plane? Um, I'm not really sure, actually. Um, if I hopefully get into some really good places, I can fly the upcoming replacement for the F-22. And you play a lot of games, like, where you make tanks and build cars and stuff, don't you? Yeah. I'm adding a little light out here. I'm just putting a little white in the center of all of that so that it's looking kind of good. Uh, I bet if you sent a detailed pic to Sotheby's auction, you could get big bucks. A picture of a living room went for $3 million. Oh, man, I wish. No, Sotheby's has no interest in me. I am not their, I'm not their demographic of artist for sure. Um, which is kind of okay. I, 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 I think as I hit this stage in my life and I, I'm where my kids are, where my kids are and I'm where I am, I'm kind of of the mind, like I'm super happy about where my art career is and I'm not, it's not that I'm not open to the universe bringing me every single blessing that it chooses to bring me and I will receive that with open arms, but I'm also not hungry or starving for it at this stage of my life either if that makes any kind of sense mm. uh oh the peasant says you will love it have you flown yet there's nothing like being uh uh nothing like being a pilot and then little bell is like my oldest was all set up to join the forces and he's an optical assistant now yeah so with spider what we're trying to do is we again because it's different we, i have military people in the family but um, many of them have passed on or are not a good resource for us at the moment and um, my mom's trying to hook us up with somebody who who that she knows, who's who knows about like all of this. But we also understand Spider may change his mind because he's thirteen, hmm. and but he has been talking about this for a long time. And we have a lot of pilots in the family, um, just like through our family history. Like my dad on my dad's side, so many flyers. My dad has his pilot's license. He hasn't flown in a long time, and he was only Cessnas. Yeah. And then Spider, you know, he said this other thing, like he, he wanted to help people. That's the other reason he wanted to maybe be in the military. And I thought that was a good reason. If you were going to be in the military, that's a darn good reason to do it. Maybe a bit generic, but. But it's the right one. Yeah. I'm bringing this red over a little bit over here because my bridge went over. And so I want to make sure that those reflections kind of are reminiscent of everything that we have going on. And then, where did I put my round one? Mm. Get my little black, what's up? Hmm. Oh, oh, um, peasant, or, am I saying that right, peasant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, she was just saying if I go into the uh, Air Force, I won't regret it. So. Well, really? Yeah. I don't know, I like, I, I don't know what that would be like, you know? No. That's pretty good. I'm just kind of trying to make sure that there's um, a bit of a curve to the light. And I'm doing it in a way where um, I can change my mind a bit if I, if I don't like how much I did it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's starting to really come together. Uh, Maureen is like, hey, happy Thanksgiving came in for the live. And uh, uh, Darcy's like, Krista, my sister, did kind of the same thing. Mother, son, Tyson, best friend high school, state camp, and he's now a wrestling coach in Warner High School, Oklahoma. He is quite a few girls wrestling. It is wild, isn't it? Like, I'm so glad for some of the things that I know change is scary. 
But some change is wonderful. Yeah. I'm liking that, aren't you, Spider? Yeah. All right. I am going to add some snow to the top of that. So let's take a little white over to our snow color from earlier, which, as a general reminder, was burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and kind of a steely blue-gray. Wait, just tell me when to do the next step, because I'm not really sure. Uh, not yet. Okay. We're going to snow before we... Well, yeah, I guess we could step a snow. So let's step a snow. So we on step 15 now? I don't know. You're supposed to know. Um, Ask the team. Wait, how, where do I do that? <laughs> if a mod can pop up in chat what step we're on. Just follow your heart and your dreams will come true. What I'm going to do is I'll do snow here and then you'll find out the thing and then the next step. Don't put it up yet till you know what it is and then I'll snow the top of the... Not sure if we're actively on 14 or if we're going on to 14. When you know, then we can change. And I'm going to come in very carefully, very precious with my round brush, my number six round, and paint little collections of snow on the top of the fence bulbs and along the fence line. To all of you guys that checked out that channel, Snowy Art, I told you about, thank you. Oh. And if you didn't know, there's a channel who all they do is winter Christmas card scenes. They're called Snowy Art. It's a real channel. Dude has an Irish accent. It's crazy. Videos are about 20 minutes. Um, the bug says 15 sounds, right? So This painting is looking more interesting. I can't believe with three colors went for 45 minutes. That's wild. They don't thank you. So, probably going on to 15, so whenever you... All right, after we snow. Since we decided to snow first, to give you a chance to find the thing. We have time. Always. So That's the only thing I would say, like, here can be challenging, Spider, is, like, sometimes you'll feel, like, all this pressure, and yeah. you forget, oh, I've got tons of time. Yeah. I'm tapping my brush up and down. That's a little strategy I have, guys, to make better clumps of snow. And I know I'm not speeding through this painting, but again, after it's over, you will get a traceable, and this painting will be put on the website as a reference. Um, and I'll put it in the community tab, just different stuff so you can find it and use it as a reference. Because the reference is my imagination. You know what's crazy is that there's this um, MRI spider that, remember that? That the that, that AI could see what people were thinking? Uh, maybe? Yes. They have an AI that can read your mind, literally. That's an artificial intelligence. It's a machine that can look at the data from an MRI and see what your brain sees. And I'm like, as soon as that's, like, available in the home market, I, I think I'm going to do a, a painting from my br brain. Like, if I could shit, would that be weird? That would be very strange. It would be so weird. It would be, it would give more art or I don't know what I'm trying to think. Um, it would allow a lot more people to be creative. Like, yeah, I have hard times when I put drawings on paper and I imagine that would be a, a, make it a lot easier having a reference of what I was thinking. Just, I love that. You know I love that. I just haven't ever talked to them about it. Yeah, I do. I encourage Spider to do this because Spider has tremendous imagination, but he doesn't always have skills or interest in executing the the rendering of it. And it's not fun to have to hit up every artist you know. And he is able now to work on his game and different things using these tools. And I think that's just fine. Yeah. 15 is supposed to be posted. Okay. Uh, yeah, Imagination. Now let's do it. Imagination. Imagination. All right. Let's finish the snow and then we'll step. Or have we already stepped? Oh, we haven't stepped yet. Okay, good. I want to come in with some just white. And on top of that fence, I'm going to add some very... See how I'm just really tapping it now? Yeah. So it just does take... And now I'm also adding the white snow to this little side here. It does just take a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just going into the pure white. Sorry, uh, peasant. What's wrong? Oh, uh, apparently a peasant had a, a disease that stunted their fly, like stunted their ability to fly. 
Oh. We like that stuff we don't know. Like we don't know on on Spider like if if he's got um anything going on that could prevent his flying. But we don't think so. Yeah, not so far. And again, um, we totally understand, but I th I think we're looking at we'd like to do um Spider had wanted to do uh boarding school military and we're not wholly there on that but maybe junior rotc for the air force is what we're thinking because again he really wants to go in the air force and then possibly into space force yeah which i mean i'm about space force because anything that basically has the star trek starfleet insignia i'm gonna be for and i i don't even care i don't even have any shade about that i'm like i don't i don't care why it happened i don't care how it happened I love that it happened. Yeah. And if you haven't seen Steve Carell in Space Force, the car the the comedy show, which is not realistic to the to the department, I don't think. Um, you totally should because it's super funny. Hmm. I have it. I gotta watch it with Spider. Yeah. So I'm just adding a little bit of white to the top of this. And that creates that sense of it being snow. So now we're painting a snowy scene where we're not relying on snowflakes being in the scene to create the scene. I'm going to just come along here. It's surprising how well the snow can look when you like doing it like that like piling up on the bridge and it, it just all of a sudden is like oh well that bridge is just super duper charming now yeah and then what's interesting and i've got to figure out how to get it. i might want it in a slightly darker color hmm. the white is kind of just trying to talk a little bit about some of that snow that might be reflected in the water, maybe. We'll have to see. All right, let's call a step and dry everything thoroughly. Thoroughly, my friends, so thoroughly. Huh? Uh, it, I do the step 15? Uh, that's what they said. You'll have to scroll back on chat. Uh, okay. Air rescue. I did the 15 step. Oh, uh, Valerie watched the Thunderbirds last week. Oh, and then hello, Iris from Germany. How are you doing? Yeah, do I'm. I've got to come visit you. I hope to visit you soon. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not like specifically your house. It's just Germany in general. Hmm? Okay. Uh, Mom is drying the the painting. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um. yeah. Hopefully, everyone's having a good Thanksgiving, a Thanks Day. I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, that, that's... Just because I'm curious, is it like a cloudy day or is it like moonlight? Hmm. Oh, wait. Are you... Oh. I'm not sure. I think you might be muted. Am I muted? Okay, you're... Okay, you're unmuted. That didn't tell me how to do that, so now you're unmuted. Sorry. Oh, okay. 
What, what, I don't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> I think I'm just trying to make sure that this has a nice kind of atmospheric little vibe going out. Yeah. I'm take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna and then kind of come back a little bit. The stream takes a minute to send over since some people are still worrying about the stream being muted. Hmm. No, it's a, it's like on a weird little delay. So yeah. it absolutely does have this sort of like even for the upstairs too, it's like a minute or two delay from when you're speaking to the So TV. can you see how I'm just improving that whole atmosphere there? And then I'm gonna want to take my T square. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of my my white and my glazing liquid. And make a very vertical line. Then I'm going to kind of take that off of my uh, snow bank. I will have to put my snow banks back a little bit, but this is worth the fight. Hmm. Is it worth the fight? It's worth the fight. Sometimes I, I, a lot of times I'll be just like, I'm always talking to our team, our volunteers and stuff about the juice and the squeeze. Is the juice worth the squeeze? <laughs> it's mm. a funny thing to say, but I have a lot of funny sayings like, he's all hat, no cattle. And boy, if you see me say he's all cat and no cattle, run. I'll, I'll, cow, I'll hat, no cattle, run. Because that dude is not worth, don't. That's, that's like my warning cry. That's like, that's about to be like, don't cross the streams. Yeah. So I'm not trying to create a white strip. I am lightening this and building the architecture that will be the light reflection. Then through here, I'm going to kind of come back across with a little bit of dark, as you can see. So that it stops where the bridge would stop it. Sometimes I'll come back oh, and nice. You got it down. Hey, you know, man, your mom's been doing this for a minute, right? Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of wild, but I have been doing it for for a hot second, and that definitely has uh, influenced our lives. <laughs> come here and add a little bit of a, a snowbank again. I lost a little of the crispness of my snowbank, so I want to kind of put them back. And make sure some, there's some Christmas in your snow banks. Yeah. Be all about it. And then I will come back with my dark. Wow, that just made them pop, didn't it? Mm. Oh, wow, yeah. So just coming back with the dark to crisp up, you know, any edges that need that, that, that considered value yeah then come along there creating a little shading where this hits there's this reference photo i've wanted to paint for years um that's got a very similar lighting effect to this Just trying to make sure. Are my? I'm just making sure my lines are as vertical as they should be. They look pretty vertical. Yeah. Sometimes when I will use the T square, it will make me aware that another line I have is not as straight as I would like. So then I will end up kind of coming through. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit of my yellow and my glaze, maybe some red. Red sounds nice.
It won't completely end it, but it will be darker going under the bridge. Hmm. Wiggling that there. Trying to think about how to make the spaces, the bridge, the light, the water reflection, all of that visually clear. Yeah. So one thing I can do is crisp this line. Well, that's looking nice. Doing that some. All right. So just like this uncrisp line diffused that snow and pushed it back, notice that this line being sharp suddenly resolves that object in a way. Yeah. Right. And if I come through here and I'm It's looking pretty pretty okay. Yeah. Looking pretty okay. And we come good. here and just make sure that this particular snowbank I'm getting my snow color again, which is, we remember, is the burnt sienna in the ultramarine blue and white. Mm -hmm. Just making sure that the light I'm okay with it. Uh, so what I was thinking very hard about is if I felt like this spike, this spike, and this spike were too similar, and if I needed to change it, and I don't. But that's what I stopped to think about. And you should always stop and think about it. Do you have any a nativity scene painting tutorial? I'd love to paint that for Christmas, just blonde. I do not. I think Joni has a great one. Joni Young. Um, I think Joni has a great one. And Angela Anderson, I believe, has one. Um, has some really great, great ones uh, for Christmas, but with a very um, spiritual feel to them. So Angela Anderson's got some great ones. Not just Snowman and Joni Young. And, 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 and maybe my mom, my mom, I never know what my mom has, but I think if you guys watch my mom, my mom has paintings like I have any, I think she might have one too. I, I don't. And you're right. It would be a good one to paint. Yeah. So then I can come here and I'm going to, um, I do have like Christmas paintings and I have, uh, like paintings of angels and stuff. I'm going to just make sure that there's a little bit of a shadow cast. See how I broke up that light because I'm casting a shadow mm -hmm. from this land object. This is a super fun little painting. Yeah. Mm, maybe not right there. That might not have been the right place to put that. It's okay. There we go. Just a little bit down the... Down the line. I like it. I like it a lot. Just generally, just generally, I like it. Just a snow and winter scene. And we didn't have to lean on anything so far, right? Like putting, um, putting snowflakes over the whole painting though I am kind of wanting to add just maybe one more layer so let's throw up another step um, hmm. it should be 16 I think but I don't know sure if I did all right let's add a little a little um we don't appear to have a step a step, a step 16 on the oh wait I can do that oh we don't uh, tell dad that we don't have a step 16 and I will, um, we'll talk a little bit about design and comp. Okay, I'll be right back. All right.
So I do want to, it's a little plain up front, and I want to add twigs or d other elements of winter. Um, you know, trying to decide, do I want to add a, a big focal tree? Um, but we're going to maybe do Kevin, so I'm thinking about that. Like, I definitely want to add some more dimensionality to, to these dark twigs, like that they have a little bit of snow collected on them and... Janine Moran, how many hoots is this painting? I'm going to let you guys declare the hoots because since I'm painting from imagination and I have a full unlimited hoot range, right? Like I could take a painting into a, like go start at a two hoot and take it to a three hoot in two seconds. So uh, one of the things to think about is that you guys can rate the paintings in that way. And then I will be like, oh yes, that's, that sounds very, very good. Are you getting the new step in, John? Ah, yeah, so, uh, the, uh... So that's a great question, and Little Bell's like, three hoots, and people are saying three hoots. Oh, so, if you guys all say three hoots, we'll make sure it's a three hoot. <laughs> Wouldn't that be terrible if I didn't guess the difficulty of this painting, and then I made you paint that difficulty that you guessed? <laughs> people were like, remember when the Sherpa was so nice, and now she's just making us not know what we're painting, or... All right, let's see if we've got, you got your step 16. Now. you got step 16. Now. Oh, there we do. I think I do want to, um, I think I do uh, want to add some snow and um, a focal, I don't know, I can't withstand another tree. There's a part of me that wants to have a big tree right here that's similar, but the, the bridge is so nice. Ah, I'll do snow banks while I think about it. So, bird sienna. Ultramarine blue, titanium white. And maybe what I'll do is I'll add those things in the next painting. Like we'll get here and then we'll take a coffee break and then come back live and then add um, Kevin and some other fun stuff. I'm going to do this first. Because I'm so straight line challenged. I am back. Hmm? I am back. You're back from outer space. I'm going to make some straight lines using my chalk and my T-square. All I feel, and the reason I'm making these, is so that when I go to put what I'm about to do on, I've got a visual guide for where straight is, because otherwise I will just lose it. Was that frozen? understandable with a brush in my mouth? <laughs> so I'm going to make my kind of shadow snow color, and let's... Hmm. Seems like cinnamon freezed. Hmm. Seems like you freezed. Uh, call that. Wait one sec. So I'll stop painting the snow. I, like so, this when I do this, this implies that this is just frozen, and and again because this isn't a, a perfect, perfect reflection, I can. We may have a, 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 a a streaming thing happening. Hold hmm. on a second. It's buffering. Hold on a second. It's buffering. I saw it buffering upstairs, so we're gonna hold off a second. Yeah, the something is going definitely wrong with the uh, stream here. So hold can on a they, second. Can they hear us when we talk to them when the stream is bad? Sometimes it allows us to recache this out, but for some reason, it this is an internet problem. My light hair is making me camouflage into the background. I know. Hold on a second. Let me see what we can do. Okay, the maybe like it's a winter painting okay. or something. <laughs> it may be. We may be putting the cache back up there now. So hold on a okay. second. It may be. Do, 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 do. I see it going back down. So generally, let's see here if this, uh, yeah, if it will drop all the buffering. Let me look, see what's going on. Do, do, do. Sorry for all this. Let me look, see what's going on. Do, do, do. Sorry for all this. It's looking like it's coming, it's, it's, it's working its way back down, but we're going to have to see. Do, 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 do. It's a lot of buffering today, though. So is give it, it? Give it just a minute. It looks like it's. It seems like it's coming back. Um, we just want to wait. Make sure that the cash buffer empties out before we do this again. And okay. Then we'll pick back up. I haven't heard a reference to Lawnmower Man in ages. The moderate <laughs> rainbow. Yep, lots of buffering. It should be cashing out. Seems now. back. Okay, so I will continue. No, just hold on. No, no, I'm going to make you wait until at least it's all the way done. It's 40% emptied on the cash. So 
We're almost all. Oh, there it goes. It cleaned up. So it looks all like right. it's. Oh, and it's all back to good. There we Just go. Just in case you didn't hear it, I'm doing my snow color again, which is my ultramarine blue, my burnt sienna, and my titanium white. I'm going to kind of wiggle that around. Don't worry, we got this. And notice I'm using my uh, the straight lines I drew to help me put little little clumps of snow that might be. I don't need every place I'm putting a clump of snow to have a straight line. It just helps me not make angles. Yeah, I think my plan right now, babe, is to take this to like a place where it's like a good thumbnail and a good painting as a landscape, very neutral. And then we have a cup of coffee and grab a little something and then come back and we go live and, I, and we do a secret painting where I add two fantastical elements. One of them is Kevin. Oh, well, I just need to get up and stretch. Sorry. <laughs> Not an art bending machine. I must pee and walk. I'm not trying to give you advice, but like, you know, is it, what is it called, a, plus, a placebo? Uh, what? What are those, uh, hexagon-shaped, like, little houses that you put on, like, your front yard and stuff? Are they called placebos, or? Gazebo? Gazebo, sorry. Oh, you think, like, a gazebo would be pretty here? Maybe on the, on the left you have a little red gazebo. Okay, so, scale. Hmm. For the bridge to be this large, then a human would be about this tall on it, right? And that lets you know how big these trees are and this tree is. So if a human is this big, how big does the gazebo need to be? It has to be at least as big as the tree. So it takes up that much space. You'd have to make the gazebo about that big. It's a pretty big gazebo. It just might be in that particular. I love the suggestion. It's a really good one. And it gave me an opportunity to talk to everybody about scale, which I really like. So these are like little kind of snow clumps that are here. Well, that's nice. I like that. So again, you know, just proceeding cautiously. And the the lines do help me. Not make angles. I think I like that. And then once I've got all those there, I can come back with a lighter value of this. I'll have to clean up the yellow chalk, which isn't a problem. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. Not a problem. Not at all. And actually, if jo if your dad lets me uh, do a test on the text, I can s I can do a thing that, like only people who responded to this text know about the Kevin text. Because mm. <laughs> why would I do that? It's like <laughs> oh, so funny. Yeah. Or funny to me. Oh, I think it's funny too. I'm just. Oh no, you're um... you're so perfect, sweetheart. <laughs> you're perfect. You're doing amazing. You it's taking your Thanksgiving break and coming down and helping your mom make a live show that is so kind and thank you. And I know it's been such a week and you've been so amazing. Thank you. I, I loved how you let Luna just wrestle with you and you included Luna. That was super sweet. Some people are curious who Kevin is. Oh, so Kevin... I've been on uh, YouTube for 10 years, and we used to do this thing where we would go live and paint like a service painting, like a landscape. And then we come back. We go we go off. I take a little break. We go do a couple of things and come back and add fantastical elements. And one of them was a Kraken, and the Kraken was in any painting that we had water. We added Kevin the Kraken once we put him in a cloud. And see, as, I'm, as we're going, I'm remembering different, different ones. Donna dropped the playlist earlier. Uh, Ed, uh, it was like a snowman family. So you think Kevin should visit a snowman family? Mm. Uh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Mm. 
I'm just dry brushing a little bit of lighter snow kind of over the tops of some of this so that um has a little bit of dimensionality to it. Could be weird is adding little little tiny eyeballs in the trees. <laughs> eyeballs in the trees. <laughs> that takes that painting a different direction. You definitely have your grandma ginger in you. Any police tape you'd like to add? What? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if you had little creatures in the trees and there's eyeballs just looking at back at you. Like, not in a creepy way. Not in a creepy way, in a cute creature way? Yeah, I suppose so. I'm just adding little highlights to the snowbank so that they each kind of hold their own space. I'm liking it. Yeah. They look good. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Yeah, I feel like that is a good thing. So I think what... It, Right now, what we have is a very lovely snow scene with a red bridge. What should we be responding to the text, says the bug. Oh, I guess it's got in the system. If you click the text and go to the link, it tracks that. And then it lets me say, I only want to send a text to people who click the link. Because that lets me know, like, who's who's genuinely interested. But then I'm not just sending texts. I'm already sent. Look, they gave me a free month. So, yeah, I texted you guys a lot because it was free. And I gave pictures because it was free. I wrote novels because it was free. They were like, you have a lot of characters in your text. If I had to pay for the amount of texting that I had sent you guys the last month, I think it would have been ten grand if it was a penny. It would have been crazy. Wow. I will be a little more frugal in my texting in the future um but i i'm thinking i might do like the backup text where it's like see is see like if we add and i and i have to decide like do we want to add a big christmas tree do we want a snowman family do we want to do a fantastical forest beast creature who meets kevin for the first time maybe the in in, in the forest beast could be like studio ghibli maybe it's a guardian a watcher a mysterious watcher i don't know what my mood is bigfoot could be bigfoot a winter bigfoot Dude, your dad Get so excited if I put a Yeti in here. <laughs> Goodness gracious, he would lose his mind. You could have a would... Yeti with uh, Kevin on his head. Well, Kevin's I... bigger than that. Oh, he's not like a tiny little. No, octopus. Kevin would Kevin would displace a lot of water in the oh. stream. So Kevin again, the Kraken that we're saying magical. Uh, all right, so Slan Cian plan to come back and see later. Uh, um, <laughs> this rock a ghost turkey flying away. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put a signature on this, okay. and then I am gonna go to the restroom, have a think for a second, just a, just a little thought about what to do next. Clean up, reset my paint, and we come back. Everyone who's awesome, come back here. <laughs> You're awesome even if you can't come back. And then we'll do things like, I don't know, flying ghost turkeys and mythical monsters. And, and we'll fill up the scene with shenanigans. Shenanigans. So this is a, this is a lovely and charming, <laughs> sweet, romanticized, nice winter scene. When we come back, it's going to be... Else. Glorious tomfoolery. Uh, what is it? Loki would say, "Glorious purpose." <laughs> Let's <laughs> we come back. <laughs> Give me like a few minutes, and I'll send a text before. But like, uh, we'll do glorious purpose. Have your dad come so he can do the outro, John Spider. Okay. And then we'll make a plan to be back, and then um, we'll we will add glorious purpose to the painting. What's real fun is this gives me two shorts. Um, the other uh, paintings uh, poll timed out as, as well. So I'm going to put that poll up in the community tab or on the Facebook page. So or maybe both places and then just do an average of the of the top votes so that the most of you get a chance to vote on what we paint. Um, and, uh, uh, I noticed that African-American Santa didn't have a huge following, uh, but, uh, uh, you probably will still see him this year because I, uh, my friend Art inspired a weird thing out of me because he responded to my Cthulhu video, uh, my Cthulhu, the Halloween video. And, uh, so my friend Art is a voice actor and a director and a writer, and he's up for some 
big award right now and stuff. So I was thinking about him and I was like, he reminded me of Satan. And then it just turned into a whole thing. Uh, but that said, Christmas Puppy was in the lead and Christmas Puppy is also, I think, a, a, a really fun one to do, though. The the other one is like one I have in my head already. So you should know, like, yes, it's you decide and I haven't painted it yet. But there is a clear idea in my head um, that you're going to get to do one way or the other. All right. What we're going to do, John, is we're going to um, take a picture of this. There'll be a traceable of this. This is the this is the the traditional winter scene that you guys voted on. Then Very I'm going to take a break, have a cup of coffee, get a little snack, and yeah. then we're going to come back and I'm going to add. We're going to make them. We're going to make it a fantastical scene. Okay. We're going to add fantastical things to it. We've had ghost turkeys that were flying away suggested. Kevin's going to be there. We're, we're Somebody put... suggested Sasquatch. There's been snowmen. And then yetis were suggested. I suggested like a crazy creature that you've never even seen before. Like a Sasquatch totally reimagined. I don't know. So let's where, see. They want to know what time and where are we going to do it? What time is it right now? It is 1.52. Could we meet at... Do you think 2.30 would be enough time? That's, that's totally up to you. Meet you at 2.30? 2.30? Where? Here. On, on YouTube? On YouTube. We'll just go live. So check your notifications to have the channel on so you hear it. I will send out a text to people that responded to the first text. Are you going to put an event up thing? Um, so they can go, go hang out in it? Yes. Okay. I'll also, I'll, I'll also put up an event. I won't be... I guess we're not going to be that sneaky. We're not... We're not... We're not... Uh, uh, Anus, what was it? Mark, Mark Oh, uh, Anus, Unus, Unus, Anus. Unus, Anus. I didn't say something. Unus, Anus. Sorry. <laughs> did you do that to me? No. Did you set me up or did my brain do that it's, to me? It's, it's, it doesn't, it's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's a valve. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what happened there? It's fine. Unus, Anus. I swear, I hear you saying the other thing. But so this it, guy, it, it doesn't have anything to do with that. This guy just did a bunch of fun videos for a year. And then if you didn't see them, he took them away. But he has bazillion subscribers. So he can lose five million and not be was, stressed uh, about it. Yeah, Markiplier. Markiplier. And his... But we're going to be slightly less obscure than Markiplier because we are <laughs> not as talented or fantastically famous as Markiplier. So I will put up a video <laughs> event that you can find. Huh? You think we're just as creative yeah. as Markiplier? My son says I'm just as creative as Mark Player, so I'm going to go with that. All right, I'll, I will put up an event. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. I just got to go to the restroom and stretch. <laughs> and then we'll make this even wilder. Happy Thanksgiving. I love you all so much. I'll see you in a few.